Hello, my name is Yale Simpson. I'm co-chairman of Extori Gold Mines. The other chairperson is Bryce Roxburgh. Today I'm giving you kind of a summary of where we are very briefly with Extori, and then really talking about the Zoe discovery. So first of all, I'd just like to go into the cautionary statement. Uh, what we're about here is that um, when we talk about resources, and I might well refer to resources, uh, it is not SEC compliant. It meets the standards of Canadian reporting. So from a U.S. perspective, please disregard those comments uh, that relate to resources. Just a quick snapshot on the capital structure. You can see the company is still well-funded with $35 million. Uh, strong institutional shareholder base, as you can see there, with 60% of the company. But let's move on. I'm really going to talk about expiration today. Uh, why? Because really the principal value driver for a junior company, once they've announced that they're a potential producer, the attention always comes back to expiration. So we're going to talk about what we're doing at Cerro Moro and then briefly what we're doing elsewhere. So in this map, we're looking at southern Argentina. It's called the Patagonia region. And looking at the red bubbles, if you like, or the red spots there, you can see Cerro Moro and a whole number of one, two, three, four other areas to the west, that is to the left of Cerro Moro. Those are some of the regional properties that I'll refer to later. Further north, or in other words, up on the slide, you'll see Don Sixto. Don Sixto we don't talk a lot about but there's 1.2 million ounces of gold there. That's gold, all categories. This is not gold equivalent, just gold. And that's a project, if you've followed um, Xtori, you'll know that's a project where we have it on hold for two reasons. One is it's relatively low grade uh, compared to Cerro Moro. And the other point is the government of that particular province, and every province is different, that particular province has put a hold on the use of certain chemicals, principally cyanide, in the production of gold. In fact, we haven't worked there since 2007. Let's go and look back to Cerro Moro. Importantly, Cerro Moro is near a whole number of mines. And if you look in the small white lettering on the slide there, you'll see the Cerro Vanguardia mine, which is Anglo Gold's mine, producing about a quarter of a million ounces of gold a year. Minantiel Espejo, which is the uh, Pan American silver mine. It's been in production for about two years. To the northwest or upper the further, you'll see Cerro Negro. That's that really um, amazing deposit that Gold Corp bought recently. Uh, announced the deal in September for $3.6 billion to take over the company Andean Resources, owner of that project. And above it, San Jose is that project Hothschild's Monero Andes. It's a gold producer, gold silver producer as well. So we're in good company. Cerro Moro, right near the coast, um, in, near the port of, port of Puerto Desiado. Just a summary of the economics. Uh, this, these economics is part of what we call a preliminary economic assessment. In some jurisdictions, they're called scoping studies where it's the first um, economic evaluation of the project. After such a scoping study or preliminary economic assessment, the company moves into the pre-feasibility mode, and that's where we are today. So that study back uh, in October, that came out in October, we put out an eight-year mine life. That's the model that we've been working, and that's still what will be incorporated in the pre-feasibility study. And that produces, uh, in that model, produces 133,500 ounces of gold per year for the first five years. Now this is gold equivalent because over half the value of the production will be in silver. This is an important point and I, maybe I'll make it here. We modeled our silver credits here using a silver to gold value ratio or a gold to silver value ratio of 60 to 1. At present, with the spectacular rise in silver prices, that ratio is less than 40 to 1. So the 133,500 ounces gold equivalent production, if you take in today's economics with today's gold silver prices, 
the, the production rate would be 15 to 20 percent higher than what we quoted in this particular study. The cash costs are quoted as $201 an ounce for the first five years. A million ounces of gold is in the resources for the project, but I'll caution that million ounces of gold again is gold equivalent and it's a very dated number. The drilling for that resource estimate finished in February of 2010, so it's well out of date. Uh, we're modeling production startup um, either, say, December 2012 or let's make it safer, first quarter 2013 with a capital cost of $130 million. Now these numbers will change as we finish this uh, pre-feasibility study that's currently in progress. Let's talk about Xtori the Explorer. That's the news that's come out with respect to Zoe. Um, we're doing exploration on a whole number of areas. Um, one of them is called the Cerro Moro Vein Field. That's the Cerro Moro project proper, as we've been calling it, where we've been drilling for some years. The other area around it is called the Foma Cruz Joint Venture. It's a much larger area around it. Then there's what we call the CVSA Agreement and Regional Targets. In fact, CVSA, uh, which is Cerro Vanguardia SA, is a, is a company out of uh, Santa Cruz that has the royalty interest on Cerro Moro of 2%. We're going to look here at the regional priorities. Now we're looking here at a slide here. Now this is a map. We're looking straight down on the project. In fact, it's, a, it's likely a Google image or a, yeah, I'm sure it's a Google image looking down. Just for scale, you can see that if you count each of these squares, those squares are a kilometer by a kilometer. Uh, for those of you in the U.S., you can see the, um, the mile scale bar. So what you're looking at in terms of kilometers is about 15 by 15 kilometers or about 10 miles by 10 miles in area. This is a small part of the project, I'm saying. It's just the one we're referring to specifically. Now what we're looking at here is our priority exploration targets. And the one that's got people's excitement and certainly ours is the Zoe discovery, number one. And you'll see on this uh, map, you'll see number one towards the bottom. Now I'm going to talk about that more. But what are all the other 15 uh, names there? You know, finding gold at Cerro Moro is, is um, two factors that are really important. Uh, I'll dare say it's not a lot of luck. Luck is really might help. It's more to do with good geology and persistence. The Zoe discovery was made recently, just announced this week, on the back of us following a trend and, and drilling a target that one of our geologists identified as his best bet for a discovery. He identified that target two years ago. And it's taken that long for us to move through the various priorities and drill it. Uh, so you're seeing Zoe, Martina, Carla, these are various names. And what we're looking at, remember, from a mining point of view, is to have a central treatment plant where we draw ore from a number of sites. And you would simply truck the ore to these sites. So trucking ore from, from number 10 at the top, uh, which is the, what we call new targets, we haven't named those targets yet, we're still getting our first drill holes into them, but from number 10 at the top to number one at the bottom being Zoe, it's about 11 kilometers. And you can easily truck ore 11 kilometers, particularly in Patagonia, where it's fairly flat. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna have a look at Zoe. How we find these projects, uh, not projects, but targets, part of it relates to magnetic interpretations. In other words, reading the variations in the magnetic susceptibility of the rocks. Now, these variations can be due to what we call faulting, vein emplacement, things like hydrothermal alteration. But in a map like this, which is back to your, the map I was showing before, you can see a series of patterns. The blue patterns, red patterns. If it's red, generally speaking, you're not going to find gold in it. It's areas that might have been red or green, but cut by narrow fissures or faults which can be occupied by gold. And the, the geophysicist here is interpreted by putting white, white lines on potential structures or faults that would represent possible mineralization. Once we therefore verify it, 
then we start to drill it off. And, and when you see the black areas, particularly on the left where it says Escondida, the reason it's black is because you're seeing each a uh, whole multitude of tiny black dots that collectively smear together because there's so many, and those represent the drill holes into the Escondida zone. So as you follow Escondida zone along to the southeast or towards the bottom right, you'll see it comes through, it swings along that hot red area to the east. We're not sure quite where it goes after that. But on that east-west segment that's going straight across the page left to right is the Zoe discovery. Let's have a closer look. This again shows it in much more detail. Again, you can see the multitude of black dots that follow from the Escondida zone further along to the southeast to the Martina discovery. That's one that we announced some months ago, another high grade zone. And then following further along, you see what we call Zoe. Now, you can't see, Ben, there's not many holes on it yet. Uh, the press release referred to how many are there. What's interesting about that particular structural position, it's the orientation east-west. When we have done exploration at Escondida particularly, the makes for the gold are on these east-west trends. In other words, where the vein varies or flexes from a northwest direction to an east-west and back to a southeast. What's remarkable about the Zoe zone is just the scale of that flexure. Normally our flexures are in the order of five to 600 meters, perhaps 800 meters in length. This one runs for kilometers. And that's why from the day we drilled our first hole and recognized the structure, we became very optimistic about the potential for the discovery. This is the drill hole pattern we now have on it. This is showing it in plan view. Uh, you can see we've, we've not drilled much of this so far, uh, four to 500 meter length of it. The drills are stepping out at 80 meters to the east, 80 meters to the west, basically drilling this on a pattern of 80 by 80 meters. For those of you in the US, 80 meters is about 265 feet. So these holes are drilled on that pattern. Let's look further again. This is a longitudinal section. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the, um, the gold specimens themselves and what have you, what we're seeing. A longitudinal section is taking your vein and looking at it as if you're looking at it side on. In other words, it's a vertical, it's on a vertical plane and we're looking at it side on such that each of those black dots with a number beside it is a drill hole penetrating that vertical plane, that vein. In other words, to the top of this slide is the surface, and as you go down, and you'll see each of those squares, as you go down, you get deeper and deeper. So far, we haven't drilled this very, very deep. I think the deepest hole here is in the order of 160 to 180 meters, say about 500 feet, 550 feet. Now, what makes this kind of unique and it's in the press release, is the fact that a very significant number of the drill holes identify silver as the mineral silver, uh, as, a, as a chemically, it's called silver sulfide, the mineral being a canthite, and gold. I'm looking at a piece of the ore from Zoe. I just came back from South America. I was there recently for management meetings and to, to review the progress and also to see the, um, the core. This sample here, and I will have uh, put this up technically on the screen to show you in detail. What's unusual is that gold is often visible, both gold and silver, in the cores. We've drilled approximately 600 drill holes into the Escondida zone to the northwest. And I would hesitate to say that maybe on two or three percent of all those holes did we see gold as native gold. And yet, a very significant part, at one point in time, as we were pulling these holes out, half of the holes were carrying visible gold. And not only that, some of the widths of mineralization are widths that we're seeing four to five meter widths, which is wider than we see on Escondida. And maybe that ties in with the fact that this flexure 
seems to be two to three times the size of previous east-west flexures that we drilled. So I think you'll see on the, when we put this up, we'll dub in here a slide of the, a view of the core. You will see the pointer pointing at some of the gold specks. But the fact is that there's a lot of acanthite, which is this silver sulfide mineral, and some of the other minerals we call escondita type being sphalerite, uh, galena, chalcopyrite. These are copper, lead, zinc sulfide minerals. So when we drilled the original holes in this, uh, the discovery holes, we knew we were drilling high grade because it's so unusual to find uh, visible gold. Mr. Matthew Williams, Xstory's exploration manager, states, we have made another blind discovery of spectacular mineralization. The surface expression of Zoe is an outcrop that assays only 0.34 grams per ton gold and 115 grams per ton silver. It demonstrates the value of persistence and commitment to a soundly based geological model. The dramatic increase in gold and silver grades in diamond drill hole MD1196, a 40 meter step back of the discovery hole MD1191, coupled with the bonanza gold and silver grades encountered in MD1204, a 40 meter step out, support our decision to concentrate 50% of our drill rigs and team on defining the Zoe discovery. Every effort will be made to ensure that this new discovery will be included in the revised resource scheduled for Q3 this year. The, um, how these things look when you drill them, and this is a, a view of Escondida. Now, my Escondida is 4.2 kilometers away, and I should have said that at the beginning, that, that the new Zoe discovery is 4.2 kilometers from the main Escondida zone. As you might recall, Escondida is approximately in our last 43101 resource in the indicated category, about 612,000 ounces gold equivalent. But it had only been drilled really down to 200 meters. And you don't get gold consistently through the whole zone. You get these bonanza to very high grade zones that are shown here in being red and purple, and which are these very, very high grades that are diagnostic of the Cerro Moro project. Now, this section here and, and the way it's showing in the upper part, the longitudinal section, um, is probably what you'd end up with having at Zoe. It will come and it will go. You don't expect it to be solid all the way across, particularly at the grades that we, we see in these projects. Now, Zoe, you'll see in a series of press releases, obviously we've only just re re put out the first handful uh, we do have um, indications of mineralization in, in uh, an abundant number of additional holes. Uh, we will continue to drill this. There's two drills on it at present. We're likely to bring a third rig on it and close up our spacing to a pattern of 40 meters by 40 meters, which is what we typically need to bring the resource into the inferred category. Now, we want to be in a position to be announcing the scope of not only the Zoe discovery, but the other discoveries as soon as we can. Um, I would say as we go through, we, we have been anticipating put out a new resource in July to talk about how big Cerro Moro is globally, but that estimate for July was not to include any Zoe. We wouldn't have enough drilling on it. So we're looking at this now to say, can we get holes in there quickly enough? to bring into our next resource calculation the impact of the Zoe discovery. So stay tuned on that point. So we are drilling elsewhere. Um, you might follow us um, up, at, on, on, you're looking here again at a map. In red and green are all the land holdings that we have uh, on the eastern part of the what we call the Desiata Massif. You'll see um, Union Domes, which is south of Cerro Moro. We put a number of holes there we're waiting on results. Um, they should be through, I'm anticipate, anticipating within the next month. Um, it's only about 18 kilometers south of Cerro Moro, but quite a different kind of discovery. Um, you look, if you look over to the west, to the left, you'll see Pantudo, actually Cerro Pantudo. Uh, today we have two drills drilling there on a series of targets that are considered to be uh, potential extensions to the discovery called Joaquin. 
Joaquin is a discovery made by Mirasol Resources. Um, you can go to their website, but you'll know that it's a very high-grade silver discovery, and we're drilling immediately across the claim boundary onto our lands, probably distance from where we're drilling to where their deposit is or their discovery is, is not more than 500 meters. Uh, similarly, we have put out results recently over at Falcon. On the right-hand side, you'll see there, we announced the first series of holes on Falcon, and we intend to come back to drill that. Sarah Pontuto, it does show you that claim boundary. It shows you the magnetic coverage you have here, and, and, and it's showing the La Marocha, La Negra veins. These are the veins drilled by Coeur and Mirasol to the north, and you'll see we're just drilling to the south on these potential extensions. You'll see some of the drill holes that we put in so far. Stay tuned. So just kind of in summary here, let's talk about the value drivers for the company. We tend to make about six announcements a year just on Cerro Moro. And here's one of them, the relating to the Zoe discovery. So there tend to be about every six to eight weeks. The company listed on the New York Amex recently and it's interesting just how much trading there is already on that platform. We wouldn't be surprised if in due course it becomes our dominant trading platform. We are, we did submit the project to the provincial authorities, the environmental impact assessment, and we are anticipating this quarter uh, the approval to move ahead with the project from, in other words, the environmental clearance that will be a value milestone. On the basis of that approval being received, we'd be the only other project in this part of Argentina that has a defined resource, that has a pre-feasibility study in progress, and that has mine permitting. The only other one ahead of us is Gold Corp's Cerro Negro. The decision to mine, of course, and back to the new resource estimate I mentioned earlier, July, of this year. It may be a little bit later if we need a bit more time to squeeze in the results from Zoe. Decision to mine, of course, would come in the second half, really in the, in the third quarter of this year. Um, we, that will be based on having the pre-feasibility study results back in June. Um, those results will allow us to take that decision to the board. And of course, last but not least, the excellent potential for new discoveries. I mentioned the fact that we've been drilling at Falcon. Union Domes, and the Cerro Pantudo properties. The announcements on those will come basically as we get enough results in hand to have a material batch of samples, we could make that announcement. Thank you. Please go to our website, www.xstory.com. Thank you.